What's up guys, this is Mike Loris with game number two between Team Liquid on the Radiant and KP on the Dire. Game number one did go to Liquid, which got their carry a lot more farmed, and the carry from KP really didn't pan out all that well, and ran into a couple of hurdles that they just could not uh, go over. So, ooh, we're going to see something a little bit different out of Liquid this time. We're going to see if KP can tie it up, though. Uh, let's go over Liquid's lineup first. Picking up the Nick Assassin Lone Druid as well as the Tinker. Now, uh, the Tinker is a hero that's more highly prized in the Asian scene than it is in the Western scene, which is uh, where all these games that I am casting are coming from. But the Tinker, still a very, very powerful hero. The fact of the matter is, though, that generally there are more desirable mid lane heroes to pick. Tinker does need his quick boots to travel. Once he does get that, then his map control is pretty good. But if you could shut Tinker down before he does get those travels, then it's a, it's, it'll really hurt him. If he goes for Rocket as well as March of the Machines, then he won't really be able to use March fully effectively. Yes, it is really good for a counter push, very similar to the Keeper of the Light Blast. But if he doesn't have those travels at, in a timely manner, then it really uh, isn't too spectacular. But we'll see. Tinker, a very, very... Uh, he's, he's a good hero. Just he's outshined by many other Ten solo mids. Like, if you put him me. against a Batrider, I don't think the Tinker's going to have that great a time. But they're also going to go with the Lone Druid, as well as the Nick Assassin, get a good mix of damage, as well as control with these picks. The Martian Machines will be really good against the Phantom Lancer. Again, similar to how uh, Keeper of the Light can clear out those Phantom Lancer illusions. You can just lay down a march, and then in the thick of battle, the Phantom Lancer is going to have his illusions constantly popping. So it's a, it's a good setup from Team Liquid. I'm going to be interested to see how this Tinker is actually played. And of course, I start with my water cup completely empty. God damn it. Uh, whatever, I'll get some water after the draft, I suppose. Magnus, Phantom Lancer, as well as the Shadow Demon is going to be the pickup. So KP, I'm ready to have a lot of sieging potential. Phantom Lancer is going to be uh, pretty much the main hero of which the KP strategy is going to uh, revolve. You can see the Shadow Demon pick up, essentially banning that out as well. Just so the Phantom Lancer does get as much farm as he could possibly get. And then any farm that he does get is going to be multiplied by the Shadow Demon, who is going to make his own Phantom Lancer army. And although Team Liquid do have the Tinker for that March counter, it's it's gonna be really they're gonna be hard pressed to deal with that unless they pick up some good amount of AoE. Magnus as well gonna hold down the mid lane. Should do fine against the Tinker, although the March is going to be a little bit uh, of a nuisance for him. KP's bands out, Life Stealer, Nature's Prophet, as well as Rubik, all these heroes that he uh, are heroes that Liquid have used very, very well in the past, even in the last game. And uh, KP going to do well to avoid those heroes at all cost. Team Liquid, on the other hand, going to go for a Chen as well as a Queen of Pain. Possibly prepping for a Magnus in that uh, solo, um, solo hard lane position. Ten Other than that, I mean, they're Team Liquid, they're going to have to look to pick up some AoE KP. Do you have the mid lane Magnus? Could look for another uh, kind of damage dealer in the gyrocopter as well. Phantom Lancer, Shadow Demon, and one other hero if they go for a Lashrak or something. They could get a pretty good amount of pushing. Right now, they will have to deal with the split pushing from Team Liquid. And, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with that. Really hard to deal with the bear at all. Just because he's formed such a nice wall of stuff that you have to get through. Phantom Lancer is one of those heroes that can get there, get through the Lone Druid, as is the Magnus if he does get his Blink Dagger. But together with the Demolish as well as the March of the Machines, Creep Waves from KP aren't going to last too long. So they're going to need some way to draw the uh, aggro off of the tower and really make sure that they save their towers, or they could just try to go for pushing themselves, as, as I was saying before. They pick up a Lashrac as well as, you know, they go really hardcore pushing the Pugna or going the Enchantress a little bit lighter pushing. And then uh, they could really take the fight to Team Liquid and force them to be on the defensive. Although with the Tinker on the other side, I don't know if that's a really viable op uh, option for KP. Ten seconds I think remaining. their best option with that Tinker is really to just let the Phantom Lancer farm. Because at a certain Five point, the Phantom Lancer is not going to care about that, those, uh, those mar that March of the Machines. Is and the Shadow Demon as well will be able to help out with that additional uh, blue Phantom Lancer army. And Team Liquid, they still need the AoE to counter that off. So, yeah, they have, they're in a good position. The t Team Liquid have some incredibly defensive heroes, or heroes that can be played in incredibly defensive manner. And we're going to see what KP want to do for their final pickup. Who's it going to be? I mean, they still have their options pretty wide open. Phantom Lancer's the hard carry. Uh, you could put him in a tri lane. You could get another solo hero on the top lane. Get like a Luna or something like that. 
Might be a little bit difficult against a lone druid who might be going into that hard lane for Team Liquid, but it's going to be Alina first. I do like this from KP. Get a lot of AoE damage. And it synergizes extremely well with that Shadow Demon, and Lashrak is the instant pickup from Team Liquid. So when you have Lashrak on the, a team opposed to the Shadow Demon, you have some interesting things going on, because the Shadow Demon, although he can cast a defensive disruption, that disruption just becomes set up for the Lashrak. Because I'm sure whoever's going to be playing the uh, Lashrak on Liquid, most likely it's going to be Fluff, I think. He has hit Lashrak stuns out of disruption time and time again. That's just a sol solid combo, and whether or not it's your team that's casting the disruption or it's the enemy team, it really doesn't matter. I mean, KP, they're going to also have that Lina, so they will have the uh, kind of very similar combo of AoE stun after this after the Five disruption. I'm just trying to say that the uh, disruption from Shadow Demon, though, probably not going to be totally defensive, because it will set up for a perfect Lashrak stun. And the final pick for KP is going to be that Brewmaster. He was pretty well from Team Liquid in the last game. Going to be going to the solo mid, going to run into the Storm Spirit? Hmm. So, Liquid, going to run a... Uh, well, they're a, it's a fairly greedy lineup. Lashrak and Nixassin could go pretty bare bones, not really get much of anything. But Storm Spirit, Tinker, as well as Lone Druid each need their farm. So we're going to see how Team Liquid actually want to lane this. I expect it's going to be a solo offlane Tinker or an aggressive tri lane. Although the aggressive tri lane potential from Liquid probably not too strong. I mean, Tinker is a hero that could uh, kill off Ancients, just sit there, stack them up, and then kill them as they stack with that March of Machines. Even if your March is a very low level, it's a good way to get uh, a lot of gold from that. And Bulba is going to be playing that Tinker. Hmm, we'll see. The lanes are going to be a little bit cramped, but I'm just going to cut the recording right after this, see if I get myself something to drink, so that I don't bust my Ten voice. As soon as Fluff decides to pick up the Nyx, it's actually going to be Ix Mike and Lashrak. And even then, it's like Lashrak has so much setup on the Team Liquid side. Here we go. Alright, we are now in the game. I now do have my water, and let's get the important things out of the way first. There we go. Please Everything is everyone. looking and sounding fantastic. So let's go over who is going to be playing what on the KP side. It's going to be Zizu on that Lina. Pylai die on the support shadow demon with that Lina. Eternal Envy heading up towards the top lane is Phantom Lancer. is going to be safe farming that hero up. Mid lane, it is going to be Arise handling that Brewmaster. And Bone is on the hard lane Magnus. Good luck to you. Although uh, he might run into an easy situation. Because on the Team Liquid side, TC is going to be playing the Lone Druid heading up towards the top lane. <laughs> Ancient Tinker, that's uh, what I was talking about, just farming the Ancients with the Tinker Fluff and stuff, is on the Nyx, Ix Mike, 88 is going to be playing the, the Lashrak, Bulba is on the Tinker, and mid lane it is going to be Korok, and with the bear leading the way, they're going to look for an Impale Initiation from Fluff, if they do catch Pylai Die, it's very unlikely, unlikely that they will do so, they're most likely just going to stick here for a little bit and ward this time. area up. What are they talking about? He is pretty young though, Ancient Tinker, yeah, they're just really asking, or kind of messing with Bulba, they're trying to figure out if he's going to be stacking these Ancients. And KP, they're going to have to at, uh, at least drop a hero down there for a little bit to see if those Ancients are being stacked, because uh, March of the Machines does do very, very well to clear those uh, Ancients out. So TC is actually going to head down to the bot lane. He's going to spot out the fact that Bone is going to... Oh! Oh, that's rough! That's amazing by Magnus! Oh, that's painful. Gotta that is painful. Is TC is, that's 80 seconds where he is pretty much completely useless in this lane. I mean, it is a lone druid, so he does have, you know, decent attack damage and stuff like that, but really, he needs the bear to survive against the Magnus. He's not going to have a fun time at all. Then he's going to have to wait either 70 seconds or until he gets a level 2 bear when he will get his uh, recall on that bear. Uh, that's really bad for TC. He's going to be really struggling on, on that uh, bot lane. At least for a little bit. Top lane is going to be a Trivish Tri situation. Looks like they are deciding to run a Tri lane Tinker. And Tinker does do some pretty good damage, but the weakness in that is that he also is a hero that needs a ton of levels. Pylai Dai going to open up with initi initiation. Ix Mike is here to support Impale onto Zizu, but the LSA does land. Bulba trying to get his way out of there. Magistic is procured at level 1, and Bulba will be fine. He's going to salve up. A little bit of damage being traded, and wh what? Where? Was the... What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I just break it? Where's the Dire Courier? Oh, no, you did not. You did not, Bone. Oh, he did. He totally did. What? Where's my... What? 
Did reset my announcers. That's not right. All right, so TC finding a courier pickoff on this bottom lane. He's almost at level three mark. Another thirty seconds. Spirit Bear, yeah, is still on that hill, just chilling. Gonna be a little bit of vision. Oh my God, misses and kills on the top lane. Axe Mike taking a good amount of right click damage, but the burst damage from Liquid already has brought down one. And the Shadow Demon Z's are now on the run. Another impale as well as right clicks will kill off the Lena. Fluff and stuff diving a little bit too far into the tower, but he will be fine. And Liquid get first blood as well as the second kill. And of course, I missed that as soon as I was backing up to see that uh, courier kill. But Bulba getting one kill, getting one assist, hitting level three on the tanker versus the level two on that Phantom Lancer. Uh, as I was trying to say before, what? As I was trying to say before, the tanker is really not the best hero. I think I broke the tango. It's not the best hero in Trilange because he needs so much experience. However, you could get that experience later if you do get early gold. Pilot Die can open up on Korok in the mid lane. Elsa can land perfectly. Korok is so screwed. There's a clap, and the right click should be more than enough to kill off this Storm Spirit. Gonna burn all his mana before he dies, but Shadow Demon in the end does take that kill. And now we see on the bot lane, TC finally pulled his bear back. 12 for 2 versus 5 for 0. Oh. Even with that bear, TC out laning this Magnus really, really hard. Most likely won't see any kills happening on spot lane until these heroes hit their uh, level seven or level six for the uh, for the liquid side and KP side respectively. But yeah, so Tinker is gonna be—he's getting a, a decent amount of gold with those kills, but nine for three is really not having as much gold as you would normally see from such uh, something like a solo mid lane Tinker. Running him in a tri lane, I mean, it is—he does do some pretty good damage. Tinker is uh, does have pure damage on his side, and even though he has picked up March, which isn't the most consistent form of damage, if you could keep them in there with the Lashrak stun as well as an assassin slew of stuns, then that will do uh, end up doing a lot of damage as it piles up. Pilot Die has found himself in a double damage room. They're going to look to initiate on Bulba. Pilot Die looking for it. Oh no, Zizu a little bit too far away. Double damage is going to run out. They know that Fluff and Ix Mike are right behind this tinker, and they're sitting right on top of a sentry ward. So no surprises here. Bulba is gonna get initiated upon regardless. Where's the follow-up? Not gonna happen. Impale onto Zizu as the split earth does follow up as well as the laser. March of the machine's gonna hit onto Zizu as well. And Tinker with the March does pick up that Lena kill. Zizu getting a little bit out of position, and Bulba taking a second kill now. Bottle as well as 900 gold on this tinker. He's well on his way to his boosted travel. Already does have the uh, regular brown boots. Which means he is a thousand away. And he's getting his gold pretty de pretty effectively. Gonna go for two points in laser actually. Usually it is a uh, heat seeking missile build with one point in laser just because one point is all you need for that 100% blind. And you go uh, one point in laser first then uh, march the machines as well as missile. But looks like Tinker gonna mix it up just a little bit. Let's take a look at, at this mid lane, how that is doing. 21 for 4, Brewmaster doing pretty well, uh, all things considered. Going up against Korok, Broom, uh, Brewmaster does have the CS advantage, and that is also without his bottle and boots because of that snipe off from uh, TC on the bot lane. Picking off that courier, really making a rise struggle because he's gone without the bottle for that entirety of the 3 minutes. Zizu trying to go for the haste rune, is going to deny it, but now he might be in a little bit of trouble. Korok doing some pretty heavy damage, and there's the impale as well. Zizu just going to get right clicked down for Korok going up to the high ground to dodge that LSA, and Zizu's going to die. Trading the Lina for a haste rune, probably not so worth it. Now Korok going to get even more of an edge in this mid lane. Arise is finally going to get his bottle as well as boots delivered to him, so his lane dominance is going to continue. However, if Korok keeps finding those kills, then he will. It will, won't really matter how many how much CS Arise will get because the levels on Storm Spirit are even. The gold is slightly in favor of the Brewmaster, but really not by much. Top lane might see another change. Eternal Envy got hit by just a raw split Earth. Wow, Ix Mike Sniper with that Lashrak. That's something I, I would not have expected to happen. I mean, Phantom Lancer was sitting there at just simply too little HP. He wasn't. He wasn't expecting Lashrak stun to land. As you don't really expect random Lashrak stuns to land, in, especially in the laning phase. Like you usually require setup, whether it is from okay, missing kills all over the place. I'm trying to make points, whether it's from the Shadow Demon or it's from uh, uh, an assassin. You usually see setup in order to land those Lashrak stuns. You see the Magnus once again being wrapped up by TC first in Tangle. Then they have the Orb of Venom, but the Bottle Charge will keep them alive. But Arise, hitting that level 7 mark after using that split to kill off Korok. Korok, still not level 6. He really needs that if he wants to survive versus this Brewmaster. Once he does that, the clap probably will not kill Korok. And by probably, I mean definitely won't. We see another smoke gank on this bottom lane. They want TC. 
He is very, very tanky though. They have, they don't have reverse polarity. Where's initiation? There it is. Bone getting hit pretty hard by the bear. Elsa is gonna land on TC, but where's the damage? They're trying to get a skewer back, but it's not gonna happen anymore. Curse on the TC very, very late by the Shadow Demon. He needed to curse him up, right? Was as he got disrupted, simply did not happen. Now TC just gonna salve up after turning back to his druid form, gonna be just fine. So a failed rotation from K KP. They are gonna run into the invisibility room. That's gonna both deny to Korok as well as get it for Bone. However, Pylai die might be in a little bit of trouble. Level two Shadow Demon really can't stand up to a uh, Korok Storm Spirit like this. Gonna burn a lot of mana going the wrong way, however, and he's gonna run right into Rise. Curse on the Korok. He's gonna try to go man mode versus these two. No, he's actually gonna. Just zip on out of there. He does have to worry about a Magnus with an invisibility room. They want to screw him back. And if Bone can land this, and that is going to be a kill onto Korok. And Korok, oh, gotta run right now. Skewer back. It's all over. Korok gonna get back in and the clap. Not enough burst damage, actually. The shockwave will hit. But Bone, only level 5. Yeah, he really needs that RP. Without that RP, it's simply not gonna happen. And Bulba, wow. In a tri lane, but 6 7 minute boots of travel. Insane amounts of farm. Leading the golden minute chart on Bulba. He's going to be a devastating force in this mid, uh, in this uh, early mid-game stage. He can bounce back to the mid lane, bounce back to the top lane all day long. Has his bottle, gonna go for a soul ring most likely. And with level three in the march, the pushing is going to happen from Team Liquid and KP. They're gonna be hard pressed to deal with this because really, what do they have? Their levels, are, their levels are not there. Level five in the PL, Brewmaster's doing okay. But this Magnus still has not hit this level 6 mark, whereas TC has level 8. Magnus is getting denied so hard by TC, my lord. TC is just crushing this lane, even though he started off the lane without having his bear. He does not care, he's just doing perfectly fine. Now they're pushing the top lane, Ix Mike has no Diabolic Edict, but the right click should be enough, and with the March of the Machines to clear out the creep wave as well, that tower is going to drop. AP going to look for a trade on this mid lane, they're going to try to go for Korok. What's the level on Lina? Level 3 on Lina, I don't know if the burst damage is really going to be enough. Korok doesn't have that much mana. And Pylai die unable to get close enough. Oh, zip initiations, Korok. He's gonna jack the illusion rune from Arise. Radiance mid tower. But Arise is the arcane boot, so he's not gonna matter. Uh, he's not gonna care about that all too much. Korok just narrowly avoiding death. Gonna run to Pylai die though, and is out of mana. Where's the initiation from Zizu? Teleportation coming in. It's gonna be the Nyx assassin. Fluff and stuff is gonna get stunned. Immediately popping the spike Harifus to stun back Zizu. Fluff and stuff just with that teleportation scaring KP away. I don't know if Nick Assassin really could have punished them that hard for that, but what the hell? Someone's like vacuuming or something. But it sounds really, really bad out there. Whatever bottom tower has been destroyed with TC, packing that level four bear phase boots on it as well as the demolish. And Team Liquid looking really good this game, even sentry warding this mid lane. And they just want to get rid of any possible vision. Unfortunately for them, the vision from the dire is not on that mid lane. Five for two with two towers down. Team Liquid are going to just snowball extremely hard. Even though they do have the quote unquote hard carry from the Lone Druid, the KP side has a much harder carry in Eternal Envy. Who now just have drums? No, just a magic wand. He's getting really, really no farm at all. Look at this gold per minute chart. This is exactly what you don't want to have ever. Phantom Lancer is getting absolutely nothing. Even the hard lane, hard lane Magnus is doing better than he is. It's kind of understandable being up against a tri lane versus you know a whole bunch of heroes that any sort of misstep could get you killed. You kind of want to be cautious in that sense. But he's gonna really gonna struggle in KP right now. They need just a lot of time. They need more picks. Here we go. Bone does have his ultimate right now, but Pilot die getting worked upon by Korok. Elsa is gonna land after this RP. No, Elsa not cast. It already have, has already been used. Split from the Br uh, Brewmaster will kill off the next assassin. So it ultimately is going to go in KP's favor. Using two ultimates for that. I don't know. Korok can get hit by a rock. He might be the next one to drop. Eternal Envy has arrived as well. But Split Earth onto a rise as he transforms back into his uh, regular form. L LSA onto TC as well as his bear. TC taking a good chunk of damage. But with that true form, he's not really going to care. This guy is really, really tanky. And March of the Machines forcing everyone from KP back. And Liquid lose, their, lose one hero. But really, they want more. Korok going to dive straight in for Pylai Die. Not going to be <laughs> looking too good for him as the Impale straight after that disruption he's gonna drop as well six to three liquid with a kill advantage and with liquid with a three tower advantage and then on top of that they have a drafting advantage too this mid game from liquid is absolutely terrifying it's what you're gonna have when you pick up a storm spirit as well as a tanker your mid game is going to be fearsome and kp although they do have the clap although they do have a magnus they simply don't have the levels and the supports and they have pl who's pretty much dead weight at this point 
versus this brunt, uh, this huge amount of aggression coming out from Liquid, and this is not like diving in suicidally aggression, this is calculated aggression. They know that they have the Spirit Bear, and what the hell are they doing outside? Is there like construction below me or something? I have no idea, but... Well, they, uh, Liquid, they do have the mid-game advantage right now, just with their heroes, and these are heroes that could snowball very well. If you get the tanker a lot of farm, you'll get a blink dagger for a staff, it's going to be impossible to kill him. Possibly a sheep. Korok, of course, is Storm Spirit, so that's going to happen. As Then you have uh, TC as well, who's going to go for early damage. Armed with Zizu, getting a little bit too out of position there. He's going to wake himself out of that uh, stun, and Korok trying to dodge the final LSA, but it's not going to happen. I mean... It's not going to happen. He's going to get the Zizu kill regardless, though. Korok just on the high ground, killing support solo as KP just feed their supports into this meat grinder that is the early mid game of Team Liquid. Roshan taking a good amount of time to be brought down, actually. TC's having a little bit of trouble with that already. He has used a summon. But they will be able to take down the Roshan without KP messing with them all too much. They're really, really weak, though. But Thorn Spirit now does have his Aegis, so expect to see even more suicidal play from Korok than you normally do see. Doesn't really have all that much as far as items go. With another 1800 gold in the bank, though, is not going to bother him all too much. He could go for something like a Orchid if he wants to go for a Phantom Lancer kill. But really, his options are fairly wide open. You now to see TC almost completed his armlet. Did I say armlet on the Tinker? I meant Orchid. On the uh, Orchid on the Storm Spirit. I might have said armlet twice. I was trying to make a point with that. But now Bulba going to find Eternal Envy. you got to get yourself out of there. Tinker, Tinker. No LSA is going to land today. Or, oh, that was actually really close. But Bulba getting out of there just by the skin of his teeth. Now does have a Blink Dagger as well as Travels 12 minutes in. Hell, if I get Travels 12 minutes in uh, in a Tinker game, I'm happy. But this is just astronomical amounts of farm on this Tinker. 465 gold per minute, shortly being followed by the Lone Druid, who now does have his armlet complete on Spirit Bear with an extra Gloves of Haste, because why the hell not? Possibly will turn that into a Lightning Hammer. Get even more early mid-game prowess. And Storm Spirit is in fact going to go for that Orchid. Three from Liquid on this bot lane. They just want to bait someone into coming in here. Tinker is going to set up some March of the Machines. This creep wave not going to last very long, although the March has unfortunately missed most of that. The Master has picked up a Blink Dagger. It's a very important item for him. Really, he's the only one who's doing any sort of action for the KP side. Teleportation on the bot lane is going to be a rise who instantly blinks forward for Bulba. Again, teleport himself away. Rock going to cancel that, and Bulba's going to die. Love and stuff. Oh, no, Bulba. What? Where's the damage? Bulba actually going to live. We'll be using his magic stick charges, and the Broodlings on the chase. They need another rock, but a blink dagger is up on Bulba. Two teleportations now going to come in. Korok trying to kill off a couple of these Broodlings. Arise is going to return to his true, uh, to his real form, but Bulba is just going to book it on out of there. Fluff and stuff is going to survive as well. Even going to turn around for a mana bear on Twilight Eyes. Korok does want more blood. Going to look for the latch in. He's not going to dodge that clap, but he will have enough damage to kill off Twilight Die. Will he have enough uh, to get out of there, however? Fluff on the run from Arise trying to juke him around. There's the blink, but <laughs> there's the Impale with the blink dodged. Arise, very well played, killing off that next assassin. And uh, in the end, Bulba did ultimately escape. Korok not even using the Aegis. And all the while, Ix, Mike, and TC nowhere near that fight, not even thinking about it. They're just going to go straight for the tier 2 on the top lane. TC with the Demolished Bear is going to tear down this tower. Bulba on the front lines to get that march. And KP, they managed to successfully defend their bottom tier 2. But at what cost? It is still 9-4, hugely in favor of Team Liquid as they take tower after tower. And Eternal Envy just cannot find any gold. He has... this better be something huge. He has drums. He has drums and he might even die right now. No, dust is gonna fly, but uh, not enough damage to kill him off. Did the Impale miss? I feel like the Impale had to have missed. Also would have had more damage on him. Whatever. Only one more tier 2 tower left for Liquid to take. And these are heroes that could do very, very well in the early mid game with a little bit of gold. But if you give them a lot of gold, they're gonna make you regret ever doing that. Pylai die is now in a huge amount of trouble. Or Venom gonna lay down that slow. And look at that, two hits already down, 200 HP. And Tangle's gonna hit on the third. And you are so dead right now. Defensive disruption in quotes again. This just sets up perfectly for IX Mike to get that last hit. They're gonna slide down to the tier two tower, then probably look to break the base. Although they don't really have to, they still could uh, farm a little bit more, wait for the next Roshan. Although, uh, Storm Spirit has used his Aegis. Don't really know when that happened, but hey, whatever. He didn't die, I don't think. Definitely didn't die. But now all five Liquid Heroes on the spot lane. KP have to mount a good defense, and they can do it. They do have a wrist polarity, they should have split. No, they don't have split. 
Oh, this is bad for KP. High, high ground gonna be breached. The bear's gonna work everything down. Zeus is gonna get stunned by his dragon slave. Korok gonna go back and forth. Missiles starting to fly now. Bulba, what level is that? Only level one of the missiles, so it's pretty much just a waste of mana to do that. Look at that, doing pretty much nothing. But the marching machines will shred the creep wave as it tries to leave the base. And Liquid, they're just gonna wait for a good initiation, wait for an opportunity, wait for an entangle. If that's not going to happen, then just slowly beat down this tower. They have the map control advantage, even though Internal Envy on this top lane. Still farming. Doesn't have a TP scroll. Wait, no. Those are just illusions. Never mind. There's Korok going to go in. Force out the disruption defensively. And lay down some static remnants. Stunned there as well. Pilot Die is going to die, but in the meantime, Arise has gone through for the clapping split. Get a kill the track instantly. Fluff and stuff. Gotta watch out for that RP. It is going to hit only onto Fluff as the uh, tornado sends TC then safety. Korok gonna go to town. Gonna get a double kill as well. Rock though is going to hit him, and Eternal Envy is on the side as well. Trying to get a kill. Not gonna happen. Arise with the levels of the Brewmaster. Really, really just carrying his team on his back, but now Lone Druid. Gonna 1 for 2. Eternal Envy is going to get entangled. Blink forward for the missiles. Level 1 missile. Get a kill off that hero. Bulba, though, taking a lot of damage. He's going to die as well, unless he has another miracle, which he does not. Triple kill for Arise. March the machines doing heavy damage. TC trying to get himself out of there. Disruption. It's not gonna happen. It looked like he was in range, but Bulba is going to die. I don't think he bought back. No, he did not. He lost a dominating streak. And KP take a much better fight than they have previously, using the RP only to hit one though. But really, it really the, the entire fight, the entire game for KP is resting on the shoulders of Rise. He is the only one who is actually doing anything you know of notice. Phantom Lancer has drums, so he's not going to be doing too much damage. Shadow Demon is level six. Finally, Lena is also finally level seven. So levels are starting to come up from KP, but really, the Brewmaster is the one who's really leading the charge. He's forcing Liquid out of position. He's going straight on top of the Tinker, which is not where you want to be as a Tinker. And he's really just pressuring Team Liquid. However, despite, despite the fact that, that is good, despite the fact that he will be able to defend like that. Oh, Bone, you are in a lot of trouble. Dare I say you are Bone? I was actually going to get defensively disrupted. Korok as well as Fluff can take a huge amount of damage. Laguna Blade can kill off the Storm Spear. Bone going to run straight into Bulba. The Bottle Charge will not save him from that. March the Machine doing heavy damage to Eternal Envy as well as Arise. Trying to kill off Bulba. Blink forward to the high ground though. And Bulba's going to be just fine. In the meantime, the bot lane TC as well as Ix Mike once again. Not going to care. Bear on the front lines. He's going to do heavy amounts of damage, but with that Drunken Haze. Really going to mess with that bear. MKB needs to be a pickup from TC if he wants to get through that Haze. Liquid losing two in exchange for only one. Liquid starting to possibly slip a little bit. The advantage still is hugely in favor of them, like absurdly. The experience advantage starting to close just a little bit. I mean, the Shadow Demon as well as the Lina will start to get a little bit more threat on the map. You can see that Laguna Blade tore down Storm Spirit. 853 HP versus the 500, 600 damage. That's scepter damage. 450 damage of the level 1 Laguna Blade. That's a lot of damage onto the Storm Spirit, who jumped right in, got a curse on him as well. Even though the curse is, uh, no, it actually this is level 4, so there we go. That's a lot of pain. That is a lot of pain. So look, we've got to make sure that they don't take these fights where they're vastly outnumbered. Despite the fact that they are ahead, they are not invulnerable. They're not impervious to the damage that KP has. Now that Brewmaster does have his, uh, clap, his, uh, split once again. And Liquid gonna unfortunately hit a very unfortunate uh, anti-timing where they walk in as soon as the big ultimates from the enemy side are up. Right now they're just farming the Ancients, possibly waiting another three minutes for that Roshan. Once they get that, they'll slap that Aegis onto Korok, have him dive in, try to go for the Brewmaster if he can, but in a pinch we'll settle for the Magnus or the Lina. He will have his Orchid by then. He'll be able to assassinate people solo, assuming there is no Shadow Demon interruption. Still, they're pushing out the, this bottom lane. Top lane being pushed, mid lane being pushed as well. Liquid just pressuring KP to not even leave their base. Going to force them to last hit under this tower. Going to restrict their gold income. With the missiles starting to slowly get built up. Level 3 on those, level 2 on the rearm. Tinker finding plenty of levels since he's getting, well, pretty much all of these creeps. Look at them. They're just running the gauntlet of these march, of these march robots. They're not really lasting long as well. They have their early mid-game items. Team Liquid, they're investing very heavily in this. They could just fall back and farm. However, if they do that, they will lose a good deal of map control. Bulba, gonna blink out of that harm's way. But uh, Drunken Haze on that Spirit Bear, gonna miss the final hit onto the tower. Zizu, thinking about denying it, will do so. Looks like that. Tower is now down. Liquid have broken the high ground, although not getting that extra gold for it. It's not like they have a shortage of gold, however. 
Edict level 3, watch the machines, maxed out, they're looking for initiation, Assassin possibly going to blink forward for an impale? Really the problem right now is the ultimates. If you could nail out the Brewmaster, you will be in a lot of trouble. Versus Polarity, onto 2, Ix Mike as well as Fluff, in, uh, as well as Croc, going to get dragged back into the base, Ix Mike going to die in an instant, Croc is going to get himself out of there, split being used only onto Ix Mike, the teleportation onto the bear has been cancelled, Arise is going to use that split only for the Lashrak, he needs more, they have to keep going, Croc as well as Bulba in a little bit of trouble, but the Brewmaster is forced to fall back. That is as good as a situation as any for Liquid. They still have four of their heroes very, very healthy, and the big ultimates, the big threats, are down. Blink forward from Fluff, gonna catch the rise in a stun. Zizu instantly silenced, gonna take missiles as well as Korok's pull. He will be popped by that Orchid as he does. Skewer back from Korok, he's gonna use all his mana to get out of there. Will not happen, however, does not have the Aegis either. Fortification gonna try to save their bottom racks, but that's not gonna happen. TC with the bear is going to whack that down until it is gone. And just going to demo uh, eat the, all the ruins as well with this bear who's pretty freaking terrifying right now. Hyperstone on him. TC gonna try to make his way out. Should be able to. He does have a shadow demon right on top of him, but with the bear as well as a TP scroll on himself, he should be just fine. So that fight, although KP did get the Lashrak, that was really, really a bad fight for them. They burned the RP. Didn't get didn't get Korok until a lot later, and then that was already when the racks were dead. Burned the RP, burned the Brewmaster split for one hero. That is not what you want to happen, and you can see what Liquid did. They ran everyone to the south except for Ix Mike. He was the only one to run to the... Oh god, Pile I died, just got his ass handed to him. He was the only one to run north, and that was to just separate KP from the rest of his team. So very well played by Ix Mike, being the uh, true hero that Liquid needs, and he's now going to go for a BKB. Looks like Assange is actually very disrupt uh, deceptive. They're just going to go for Roshan. Bottom lane is going to push out by itself, Eternal Envy. He's finally finished Diffusal Blade, but really, he needs more, because look at what TC has. He has like three Diffusal Blades worth of gold in his inventory right now. Actually, what is his net worth? Only two. Maybe only two Diffusal Blades. But still, that's a lot of Diffusal Blades. I should just, like, make all of the currency in this game boil it down to how many Diffusal Blades do you have. And of course, that'll make everything very easy. DC still very tanky, gonna head towards an AC, almost does have it as well. Korok going to find Eternal Envy, gonna burn a lot of mana, and he does have his Aegis though. Screw up to the high ground, clap, as well as Curse. Korok gonna take Laguna Blade, there's the LSA, don't even need the Laguna Blade. He will, however, just be able to get right on out of here. TC gonna go with the bear though, gonna kill off the Phantom Lancer, stuck around for way too long. Korok gonna revive back to full HP, arise. Entangle, not gonna happen for TC, Zizu gonna hit. Korok with the LSA as well, does have that Laguna Blade still, Korok gonna get hit pretty hard with that, Rise gonna blink in for a clap, will kill out the Storm Spirit, and Korok once again being a little bit too over aggressive, but they are getting their gold, they already do have the Braxes down, they could afford to make a couple of rough trades, and that isn't even a rough trade, I mean they got rid of the Phantom Lancer, Axe Mike gonna get initiated upon, dual stun from the Split Earth, but he's gonna get screwed up to the high ground, right into the clutches of all the supports from KP. So Liquid losing a couple heroes, gotta watch out, they really have to tighten up their game. I mean, they're very, very much so ahead. But if they keep feeding heroes to KP, then the big items start to come up. I mean, Blink Dagger's already up in the Magnus, which he wasn't even near a couple minutes ago. Blink Dagger is up on, is up on him, Blink Dagger already up in the Brewmaster, gonna head towards what is most likely going to be an Aghanim Scepter. The supports still going relatively uh, basic with their items, really. They can't accrue that much gold with all the pushing that is happening. The items still in favor of Liquid, as they will continue to be for a good amount of time going forward. You see Bulba just mass farming this jungle. That is just cruel and unusual. It's going to be fine to go up to the top lane and just put pressure on all the lanes. You can see how many people KP need on this bot lane in order to hold off these super creeps. Phantom Lancer is almost at the point where he could do it by himself, but still, he's not that rich. 120 gold, he's fourth in the net worth chart. You really need more on your Phantom Lancer. Liquid are just waiting for their next objective. They burn the Aegis to pretty much no benefit. So I sure hope they're not going to wait around for another however many minutes and just wait for another Aegis, because that'll be incredibly boring. But it will be the most safe thing to do. They have complete map control. KP, the only thing that they are farming is whatever Liquid is pushing into their base. Ah, uh, Liquid looks like they have enough. Sheepstick up on Bulba. And they possibly want to blink initiation. They have more than enough initiation, actually. Korok, Fluff, as well as Bulba. 
could all blink themselves in. Missiles starting to fly. There's an RP catching TC as well as Bulba to clap as well. Bulba's going to take a heavy amount of damage. TC going to drop as well. They cannot escape. This split has been used. TC on the run, not going to happen. One more shockwave will kill him off. There he goes. Korok and Zip right in. Going to try to go for Pilai Die. He's going to get out of there before he does get himself get caught, though. Sounds on to Zizu. To put Earth going to land as well as Korok and dodge shockwave, but he's now out of mana. Eternal Envy going to beat him down. Lestrak sent up into the air, and he's completely surrounded by KP heroes. Arise going to get one more clap. Ix Mike going to try to fight his way out of there, do as much damage as he can. But Liquid lose four with the initiation, possibly jumping the gun. But really, it was that reverse polarity from Magnus. Blinking in, getting two very, very core heroes. Liquid lost TC as well as Bulba right off the bat. And these are heroes that usually stay or, or decently far in the back. Lone Druid lost his... They lost the bear very, very early, which means that their main source of physical damage was cut off. And the Tinker couldn't get anything off. No Sheeps, no no March, no Hex, or no uh, Missiles, no Laser, no nothing. So KP, if they keep doing that... They could find themselves back into this game. And Liquid just got to make sure to avoid that clumping. Korok even going a little bit suicidally, but hey, that's what Korok does, man. That's just how Korok rolls. So you're going to see a little bit of a uh, re kind of taking of an advantage for KP. Experience and gold will drop slightly in favor of them, but still, they're not in great shape. Pilai die gonna be get spotted out by Fluff and stuff. Huge zip in from Korok. Pilai die is gonna die. Bulba gonna blink forward as well onto Zizu. Gonna burst him down as well. Two supports down for KP and Team Liquid. This is their chance to break the base right now. Level 60 on this bear, 2,000 HP. You cannot break this bear unless you get him into your into your base away from his support. Shadow Demon actually does have enough gold for buyback. The Fluff stuff gonna get a blink, mana burn onto Bone. Not gonna matter too much. This bear is gonna wail on the tower. Really needs to put that drunken haze on him. A little bit too late though. Our arise. Now the bear is gonna be pissed and he's gonna kill the tower. This bear, you cannot stop it. Unless you stun it somehow, but Lena's dead. Fortification gonna pop, and the March of the Machines constantly flowing. The mid Rax is in trouble, probably gonna die. Unless KP mounted Miracle Defense. No, this melee Rax at least is gonna die. Range Rax, we could even go for this one as well. Stick the bear on him. Get him, bear. And other mid Rax. There's a three man RP though. Gonna pull them all back. Hex, we're not gonna save them. Croc gonna zip his way out. Fluff this up. Popping this by Carapace, but it's not going to be in time. Ix Mike going to drop. Korok going to try to go for Pilot Die. Dodging the LSA. Not the LSA, the Laguna Blade. Oh my god, Korok. That was a little bit lucky, but a little bit baller as well. Dodging the biggest nuke on KP's side with Ball Lightning. That is some Wo Dota shit right there. Although it was mostly like him just trying to get away and KP, unfortunately. Throwing the Laguna Blade at an unfortunate time. But 21 for 20, KP have tied it up, but they're down two Raxes. This is going to be absolutely horrible for them. TC still getting his farm. Has his AC up. And right now, Liquid, they're going to slow push the top lane, possibly wait for an Aegis, uh, although it will be a little bit until they can do that. They just park themselves right here and wait until wave after wave of creeps goes into the KP side. Eternal Envy is finding some gold. He does have level 2 defusal as well as 2600 gold. But really, is that enough? The Mana Burn is going to be incredibly useful versus all of the heroes on Team Liquid, but all the heroes on Team Liquid, they're incredibly stacked as well. Brewmaster actually is going for an armlet. I don't know why. Didn't he have a ogre club? Did he sell that and go for an armlet? Usually you want to invest heavily into your split. He's level 16 and an Aghanim Scepter would help him incredibly well. I mean this will help him a lot when he's not in his uh, true and when his when he's not in his split form. But really like is that what you want? Do you really want to invest into when you're not in your split form? Or it's going to be dewarded, but TC on this top lane already doing exactly what I said. MKB is going up on him. Going to skip the Mjolnir at least for now. Going to push out this top lane. Bear on the front lines with the damage. Oh my god, this tower. Got to put that haze on the bear. Going to make him miss a couple of attacks, but really, he's not going to care that much. He's going to tear it down. 75% chance to miss attacks. Yeah, right. He's not missing anything. Ike's Mike can take a little bit of damage. Split Earth trying to clear off those Phantom Lancer Illusions. Blink forward from Rise. Gonna kill off the Lashrak. The Rax has already dropped. Korok gonna dive in. Just gonna go for Pilot Die. Gonna pick him off. Now gonna go for Zizu possibly. Dodging another LSA. Fluff and stuff. Gonna get two man stun. Split has been used. Bulba gonna teleport straight on in. Where did he blink to? I have no idea. Gonna screw it back. RP onto Fluff as well as Bulba. Fluff gonna be the first to fall. Bulba shortly thereafter. TC just standing his ground with that barrier. Gonna try to go for Eternal Envy. Will get him. But the split is still active and Bone is still alive as well. TC gonna sit in the middle of everything. He's tanky, but he's not invulnerable. Rise now. Return to his form with that armlet. Gonna do some heavy damage. Shockwave gonna fly as well. TC is going to get killed by that lance, but the Meg Creeps have been taken out. 
and KP, although they kill off four of Liquid, Fluff and Stuff, reviving and trying to get back into this fight, the Mega Creeps are up and Bone is going to die. There you go. You should not be there, Magnus. Not a great idea. But really, he's, he was in his base and he... You really couldn't have seen that one coming, but Mega Creeps are now up from Team Liquid, and I've got to say, that is GG. I've called GG prematurely a couple times before, but they simply do not have what it takes to ha handle Mega Creeps. Liquid could probably just sit back into their base and just chill, wait for another Roshan, farm some Ancients, because why the hell not? Zizu, as well as uh, Pilot Die, can not be too useful versus these uh, Mega Creeps that are going to be incoming. To Arise's credit... Uh, the armlet will help them a little bit more than the Aghanim Scepter against Mega Creeps, but uh, it's, it's yeah, it's not going to help him enough. He needs like a Battle Fury or something. They do have the Empower from Magnus and Eternal Envy. Still sitting at 2300 gold. Not sure what he wants to buy, really. He's not being a huge, as huge a uh, force in those fights as they really needed him to be. So now Liquid is going to push onto all fronts. Wait for these uh, kind of useless buildings to drop down. And then... Well, they could sit back and wait, or they could... They should probably at least wait for TC, who's going to go for a basher. Or no, that's an MKB, is it? Four. Oh, Arise, gonna hit by a missile, Fluff and stuff. Jumping the gun, possibly a little bit. Arise has a Mask of Madness, gonna go to town onto Fluff. Oh my god, Brewmaster. This is some pub shit right here. Not saying that he's bad or anything, but this is something that you could do in pubs, and it'll work. Usually it is optimum. Let's go for that Aghanim Scepter, but Brewmaster gonna go right-click build? Hell yeah. I don't think you could outfight this bear, though. This bear is terrifying. Gonna sit in front of the tower and tank hits as the mega creeps come in. Eternal Envy gonna get it, try to get a kill onto Ix Mike, but it's not gonna be enough. Disruption onto a couple of illusions. I mean, Pilot Die trying to do what he can, but their base is in full breach on all fronts. Tower's all gonna drop. Arise is gonna pop the split. Ix Mike, though, instantly into the BKB form. Won't help him versus the right click from Eternal Envy. Should be brought down. Wobble gonna teleport in. TC's bear spinning up into the air. So far, it is two down. And Bone somehow living at a sliver HP. Quark and has been finished him off. Now Eternal Envy might be in a little trouble. He's going to burn a lot of mana from Quark and use the rest of the mana to zip out. There's the RP catching a lot of creeps as well as Quark. Well, we're going to buy back into this game, but the GG is there because the Mega Creeps have been wailing on the tower this entire time. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid take it 2 0 over KP from the Premier League Season 4. And really, just getting so many towers, such an early game advantage, and then snowballing forward. Team Liquid with a very nice draft. And really making it work as well. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, comment. If you did not, let me know why. Other than that, GG.